In the last 30 days, Tudubu has carried out a flurry of activities uh, that shift the economic, security, uh, political and firmament of the country. A few minutes after swearing in, uh, he completed the removal of the fuel subsidy um, by his predecessor, which the controversial fuel subsidy is gone. Yes, um, the statement was made on the um, inauguration day, which sent Nigerians into some form of commotion. Now, currently, fuel prices jumped from between 488 naira to 550 naira per litre, from 187 naira, which was pre May 29. President Tinubu also signed the electricity bill and students' loan bill into law. He abolished multiple um, exchange rates and opened the nation's borders that were shut by the immediate past president, Muhammad Buhari. He sacked um, security chiefs and replaced them with officers drawn from many Japanese school zones across the country. And um, many have um, given him kudos for taking courageous steps so far, um, and others have noted challenges ahead. And still, many have frowned at the anti-people actions. Yet, some said it's too early to assess him. Joining us to discuss this uh, is Oponabo in Kotaria. He is a public affairs analyst. It's so good to have you join us, Mr. Inko Tare. Good evening. Good evening, Marianne, and uh, good evening, Nigerians. Interestingly, we've all sat and watched what's happened in the past 30 days, especially the very famous inauguration day when we heard that statement, subsidy is gone. Of course, like I did say uh, in my opening, it threw a lot of Nigerians into a state of disarray. And as we all know, was serious. Many, uh, many said that it was a bit too early. Many said uh, he should have waited. There could have been uh, you know, a plan before this statement was made. But the truth, as we all know, is that subsidy was already gone, whether we liked it or not. But let's look at the Bola Met Tinubu administration so far. Um, let's start with some of the bills that he signed. Let's start with the electricity bill. Um, what are the benefits of that bill that uh, Mr. President has signed? Well, I thought we were going to start with the subsidy, but probably we'll get back to it. <laughs> we'll keep subsidy for the last. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, when you talk of the electricity bill, it's a welcome development. I must say that. Because we've always had this excuse. I mean, the providers of electricity have always given us special reasons, reasons that might look real, but are not, you know, to tell us that um, the grid is down. There's all kinds of stories. But the bottom line is Nigerians are the receiving end. And the most infernal aspect of it is the issue of estimated bill. You just, whether you use your electricity or not, whether you're in or out of the country, at the end of the month, they bring something for you to pay. Mm -hmm. And once you don't, they disconnect. So we're subjected to all kinds of sufferings. And the decentralization is quite uh, welcome. Because, for example, Peter Dili, as far back as... Um, uh, 2004, five or there. Already we had uh, the gas power plant that was supposed to generate enough power for river sweeping. But the problem we had as at that time was the distribution. And that was because of the existing law as at that time. Because the law made it only, gave the federal government only the power to distribute. So even when it generates, you cannot distribute. And what's the whole essence of generating when you cannot distribute? I remember that the then president, the Lucy of Asimba, Lucy of Asimba, was the one who came and commissioned the gas power plant. And it remained uh, redundant because of the law, existing laws as of that time. Now, Tinubu has come into office. And as of course, Tinubu was also a governor when uh, Dr. Peter Dillo was a governor. But now he's in office and he has decided to decentralize it, which is good. So you don't really blame. If you really have to blame anybody, you have to blame the governors, the sitting governors. If there's power, uh, poor power out, now you blame your sitting government. So I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, take, for example, River State, I expect us to have near constant power supply. I agree those equipment that they bought and all those things uh, would have gone rusty, but all you need to do is uh, refurbish them and uh, put them to use. So River State should have near power supply in the next maximum one year. 
because they have to mm. repair, maintain, change some of those equipment and some of the parts. So in the next one year, I expect that River State, the state like River State, there are other states that didn't even bother, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they didn't even bother as a result of the laws as at that time, uh, will now begin to re consider setting up their power plants because they can now distribute. There's also another mm. way of generating uh, funds, revenue for the states. What should yeah. actually go to the federal government will now uh, get to the state. So it's another way of generating good revenue without for the state. No state, as we speak right now, should complain of uh, poor revenue anymore because electricity is what everybody depends on. Everybody uses electricity. And so you're going to yeah. generate revenue. All you, you can do is go into partnership with foreign countries, uh, foreign companies, and so that is otherwise, if they don't do that, and the electricity is electric, it's quite faulty. It will also stimulate crisis in the states. You know, this time around, the the governors, the people are closer to the governor. Or like before, where if you talk of power outage and the people are upset, they have to go to Abuja. Mm. Most people are discouraged by that. Now the state, mm. and you don't have any justice whatsoever because you're also making money. The tariffs might be a little bit higher. It might. A little bit higher because you understand the states will be focused on making money for itself. So it might be a little bit, it's not going to be like the almost for the Christmas kind of level of Russia. You know, you remember when the federal mm. government was working, uh, providing electricity, most Nigerians were paying little or nothing. When eventually the private uh, sector came in, we started paying exorbitant prices. And most times they, they, they robbed us of, 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 of robbed us off because. Uh, we have been paying for uh, um, uh, electricity we, did, we never received. Now mm -hmm. you get to the state, we believe that the handling will be better because you're closer to people. The state will make a lot of money from it. But the state governors must also be very careful because once there is power out and the people are not satisfied with the excuses being reduced, of course, there will be a problem because that will be robbing the, 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 the citizens. Let's come to subsidy because of time. Um, the subsidy removal um, situation has been a sore point for not just uh, the average Nigerian, but even the, the man who's at the top um, and even the elite. It, it simply <laughs> cut across everyone. And you and I have experienced um, a few, you know, tightening of belts or further tightening of our belts because of the subsidy removal. Many have pointed fingers at Mr. President, but there's the, the, there are also those who are saying that subsidy had to go whether we liked it or not, um, and pushing it would have been, you know, delaying doomsday. Um, but let's look at, you know, the future of this. Um, I've, I've listened to many financial experts and business and ec economic experts who have said we might have to suffer in the interim for the greater <laughs> good. But what is the possibility that the right people will be saddled with the responsibility and there will not be any impunity. Looking again at our past and how things of this nature have been handled, can we be certain that something good will come out of this? Honestly, the removal of subsidy on the 29th of May is what I'll describe as leadership deformity and the lack of appreciation of the Nigerian situation. It is a shame and a disgrace and highly unacceptable for something to be done that the May 29th dollar and Tinubu removed subsidy for the very wrong reasons. There is no way in the world that energy or petrol is not subsidized. I repeat, nowhere in the world. Nowhere. What they usually do is that's why foreign countries don't joke with their taxes. Because they have to subsidize energy for the common man to have access to energy and for businesses to grow. Then they now tax you. And that in, in civilized climate, the evasion of tax is as criminal as committing murder. But it is that it just that the taxes they use to provide and maintain the energy you use and the energy you use. The problem is not subsidy. If I really talk of subsidy, you cannot even exonerate the uh, presidents of the country. First and foremost, they said they know those that is a cartel, and they know those that are involved in the cartel. That is what they said. 
but they, they fail to name, mention, and expose those involved in it. You say you know. And you allow them to carry on with the nefarious activity. That is aiding and abetting. And in most cases, our presidents are the ministers of petroleum. You can imagine under Buhari, for eight solid years, they were paying NMPC staff, maintaining NMPC structures, and I'm talking about the buildings. They did turnaround maintenance. You are giving out money for turnaround maintenance. Meanwhile, dirty was being maintained. The system remained comatose. Are you not aiding and abetting? Are you not an accomplice? Because they are accomplices, and that is why they cannot, they could not name or shame. The problem has nothing to do with subsidy. It has to do with corruption in the system. It's, not, it's like, for example, now, you, you own a house. An arm robber comes into the house, steals everything, and walks away. Rather than fortify your security, you say, let us close that house, lock that place up. That's not the best approach. That's not it. There are persons involved. You have a, look at the ship that left Nigeria, that it with oil. The ship had to be arrested and returned. Where are those involved? Because they are hobnobbing with the president. And the, I always say president because the president is the minister for petroleum. Those involved in that, what happened? We have about 32, 34 oil wells. Nur Badu was the man made in charge of the committee that investigated it. Only 20 had the cover and whatever they call it. The others were just left. We budgeted money for metering of our pipelines. What happened? Nobody can even account for the billions or trillions we budgeted for the metering of our pipelines. You have petroleum minister, you have uh, minister for state petroleum. Is it not their duty? Is it not incumbent on them to monitor? Because the money would have been released to the petroleum ministry, and the petroleum ministry is headed by the president. Why didn't you go and meet at those pipes? If you talk about, do you know how much you produce, the barrels you produce per day? We don't even know. Well, well, so what, well that's been a question that been, has been asked over and over again, and, and we get all kinds of conflicting figures. That's also that's an gonna, issue that needs to be But remember, even the former minister for state admitted we don't even know what we produce per day, the virus. If you don't know so, what you have, how do you know that they are stealing? Then if you talk of so, web, and that people are attacking us, sorry, Dr. Bob, oh, for me, it's a disclosure. Rather than attack, you investigate it. We've had situations mm -hmm. where even military operatives have been arrested. For any, arrested. The governor of Iran said, has said this repeatedly, the former governor, uh, repeated, that he told the South, the um, uh, military men that came to visit a country call on him. He told them that your boys are involved. A DPO was fully involved. It, all what did the military do? They transfer. Once you complain, they transfer. And they continue saying they are retired. They are promoted and retired. So the military fully, the military cannot even estimate itself because your duty, your, your sentinel to ensure that these things don't happen. Your duty is to ensure protection. And you fail to protect. That's why the boys are doing what they are doing. So how can you generate the military? So that is quite so, annoying. Quite a, they think Nigerians are fools. So let's, the problem let's is not the subsidy. The problem is the corruption. The corruption in the system. Uh, High level corruption. And that's, one, that's why I'm coming back to the case of President Bola Tinubu, who, as we speak, is not the petroleum minister. It's just marked one month in office. And I want to ask, as much as many have applauded, much, many have also queried, um, you know, some of the positions that he's taken. Many have said that he um, is obviously... Uh, it was a rash decision. You know, it was a rash decision. Yes. Yes. But but then, I, I have a question I want to pose to you. Um, now that we have a Bola Ahmed Tinubu there, and you have pointed, um, you know, succinctly that it is not um, subsidy that is the problem, but it's corruption. Is Bola Ahmed Tinubu um, the man to fight the corruption in the system, especially if... Oh, he... yes. Oh, yes. That is the that is the function and the duty of Mr. Person. But to can he do the job? Protection of life. Can he do the job? He can do the job, but he's looking for an easy way out. First and foremost, you remove the uh, subsidy. In fact, I, we are the air, but I told persons that I have a conviction 
that one of the reasons the president rushed to remove the subsidy was because he is going to benefit as an individual based on the confidence and feelings. He's going to benefit and this and then tremendously from the subsidy. That is my conviction. Because if you look at the subsidy, for example, let us agree you want to remove subsidy. First, you remove the subsidy about a month earlier than we had expected. Because uh, pres a former president, um, Buhari, had said towards the end of June. Now you're saying that if there are no budgetary provision for the subsidy. How did Buhari manage it in that meeting? You know? And they are said end of June. So people were already preparing a painful preparation. But now let us even say you want to remove the subsidy. You have to have at least some palliatives of the removal of that subsidy. Look at the domino effect. Many people have packed their cars they cannot afford. Those with filling stations, uh, those with uh, generators, because in Nigeria, we depend on generators. Those with generators yeah. cannot even power their generators anymore. Then the ripple effect, the cascading effect, the market woman, some can't even go to work in it. As a result of that, one or two states have declared uh, public holidays on Thursday and Friday. For two days, you don't go to work. Three days, mm -hmm. yeah, three days working days. You can imagine. And now look at that will definitely have some negative effects on our economy. Mm. The, the five working days, those who say you have to work for five, we are looking at productivity. Now you're removing three days and you're still paying them. But you don't blame them because they cannot even afford it. So you're transferring your ineptitude to the masses. If you say you want to well, do subsidy, all you need to do they set up a committee. Think of the part. Now, even when they say, how deep are they? Sorry. You're even talking of cars now. Taxes. You see, there cannot be, I always say, there cannot be a crueler tyranny than that perpetrated under the shield of the law. Every year, you now go for renewal of ownership of your vehicle. Where will you get the money from? Children are uh, dropping out of school. The economy is being it, excruciating. It, 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 at this point in time, and it's a, one, it's a, can no longer feed. Meanwhile, you have convoy. If the first thing you do is you reduce the number of people in your cabinet. It's an it's an area of issues, issues that we have to. It, it's an area of issues that we need to continue to talk about. Unfortunately, Mr. Inkotai, I, I, I think my, have, I should tighten my belt. And why are you losing your belt? I can tell. I can You're tell how out, out of the you are you about this it issue. It is callous. But thank you, my dear. Let me let me make a promise. Let me make a promise. We will come back and have this conversation for a long hour because this issue has to be addressed whether we like it or not, and we're going through it one way or another. But I want to say thank you, Open Abayi Kotara, the Public you. Affairs Analyst. You're it's welcome. always a pleasure to have you discuss issues thank with you. us. All right. Thank you. You're well, that's you're the looking show so tonight. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, that's the show tonight. We want to thank you all for participating. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, subscribe, and you can catch up on all of our different programs, even our previous episodes. My name is Mary Anakun. Have a beautiful evening. Good night. <laughs>